Hi, my name's Dr Kate Ringham. I'm the Programme Lead in Applied Accounting at Oxford Brookes Business School in Oxford Brookes University. And the purpose of this video is to uh, talk about referencing where you've collected primary data for the purposes of your research report, part of the BSc Applied Accounting. So just as a reminder, primary research is where you're collecting information or data to answer your research question directly. Um, and we usually use questionnaires or interviews uh, to do this. Please do remember it's perfectly acceptable to um, use an online questionnaire, such as something like a SurveyMonkey questionnaire, and it's also <clears throat> acceptable to conduct interviews via Zoom or Skype or uh, telephone interviews. Most important thing is that you stay safe. Um, and in times of pandemic, please follow any local health guidance. You also might, as part of your primary research, use what we call internally generated information. So if you are using information that is internal to a company, might be HR policies or CSR codes, possibly budgets, then you do need to gain permission to use that information because in a sense it's confidential to the organisation. You also need to reference that material. So when we're thinking about internally generated information, the way that you might go about referencing is um, using an in-text citation. So an in-text citation is what you include within the research report. So as you're writing about the information that you've gathered, your reference would be the title of the document or possibly a short description of the information and then the relevant date. So the example here is management accounts July 2020 or maybe something like a, a, Steve, a staff leave policy and the date of that policy. You then need to include that information within the reference list. So in the reference list, you include the title of the document or the short description and then the date in brackets. You would then describe it as an internal document and provide the information about when you access that information. So if we take that management accounts example, we can see management accounts July 2020. So that means you're able to link the in-text citation with the information in the reference list, we would then label it as ABC and Co internal document and the date you accessed it. Now, sometimes companies are happy for you as students to undertake research, but they ask that they remain anonymous. So in that situation, you still need to gain permission uh, to conduct the research or use the internal generated information. Um, but you don't want to label the name of the company. So what you do is if the company is requesting to remain anonymous, uh, if you contact ACCA at Brooks, provide the evidence that you have got permission to conduct the research, I as program lead will write an email to confirm that you have been given permission to conduct the research and that you've been given permission to anonymize the data. And then you can use a, an anonymous anonymizing code, um, a pseudonym, and um, the data remains confidential. As we'll see at the end, um, you would then include that email where you've been granted permission by me in the appendix, because we do ask that you provide the evidence that you have been granted permission to conduct the research. There is another video on conducting primary research, so please do listen to that if you're interested uh, in primary research. Um, so <clears throat> if you're referencing interviews, then um, you want to include the details of the interviews, but you need to main, maintain the confidentiality of the people that you've actually spoken to. So what we do is we give every interviewee um, a code. So we can call it R1, R2, R3, meaning respondent, respondent one, respondent two, respondent three. But you want to provide the person that's reading your research with some information about um, who you interviewed. 
because as people are reading um, the quotes and the data that you've collected, they might want to get that sense of, you know, who was being interviewed. So you, again, maintaining the confidentiality, you provide a description of the job. So a, a job title, um, the gender of the person that you're talking to might be important. Um, that depends again on your research question. Um, the length of service in the organisation might also be of interest. And we often include the length of time the interview took. So as you can see, you can provide that within a table. And if you look in the information pack, you will find a suggested structure for a research report um, conducting primary data. And within the information gathering section, you would explain who you interviewed. So then how do we use this interview data when we're actually writing our research report? Well, within the analysis and evaluation, you can present a summary of several, um, the views of several respondents, but you can also use direct quotes. So for example, you might say three of those interviewed agreed or about whatever, and two evidence that you're actually using data to make that statement, you would then put respondents one, four and six, if those are the three people that agreed. Um, but then respondent seven disagreed, stating, and there you might want to use a direct quote. Where you use a direct quote, you include the words within quotation marks and you would label it with the um, identifier for that particular interviewee. So if re respondent seven disagreed, you'd add respondent seven at the end of the quote. You have no need then to include though that information in the reference list. You've actually provided the reader with the information about um, who those respondents are by including the table of interviewees earlier in your work. So in this instance, you include the information within the, um, the text. So where you're using your data within the text, you include the reference, but you then don't need to include it within the reference list. Well, now let's move on and think about questionnaires. What, what do we include about questionnaires? Well, we do need to include details of the sample. So who did you survey and why did you think it was appropriate to survey those people? How many people responded? And please, we don't expect 100% response rates. Um, in fact, I worry if we get 100% response rates because um, participation in a survey should be voluntary. Um, and you might want to reflect on any factors that have affected response rates. Again, that's included within the section about information gathering within your research report. Um, and then when you're using the questionnaire data, please think about which data is most interesting. Where does the data differ from theory or what was expected? Um, and there isn't the need to include the data about the nature of participants, you know, the percentage of respondents, the number of males and females, the different roles, right at the beginning of the analysis and evaluation. That can be quite um, disheartening for the reader. The reader's really interested in what you found out that was interesting in your data. Um, that, that information about who participated in the questionnaire, again, could be included in a table within the information gathering um, where you discuss how you've conducted your research. Please do look in the information pack. There are suggested structures that might help you in terms of thinking about how you present your work. Um, Sometimes in questionnaires, um, people leave what, what I would describe as an open text response. So the majority of questionnaires, you are using closed questions. So people respond either on a scale or yes, no, or whatever. But sometimes there's what I would describe as a free text box. Um, and people are able to answer that question as, as if it was an interview. And that's how you can um, uh, resp respond, that's how you can refer to that information within your um, analysis and evaluation. You can refer to those responses as from questionnaire one, three, six, etc. Um, should you wish to use those open text responses. Um, 
So appendices, when we're thinking about a primary data collection, there is an anticipation that um, we will see what we call the research instrument. So if you've used a questionnaire or an interview guide, which is the list of interview questions, then include that as an appendice with your research report. You must, and it is a requirement within the assessment criteria, provide the evidence that you have been granted permission to conduct the research. So the concept of the permission letter is really important. And as I mentioned earlier, there are ways we can deal with uh, requests by organisations that the information remains confidential or anonymous. So what next? Um, you will also use secondary data in your research report. So if you are conducting a research report using primary data, you will also use secondary data because you'll want to reference um, maybe press commentary or the annual report. Um, so please do go and look at the videos on how to reference those different types of sources. And also the channel has videos on um, writing in an academic style. Um, what do we mean by analysis and evaluation? Please do subscribe to the, um, the YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Uh, good luck with the data collection.